Hey, Michael. You're muted. Yeah. There we go. Hello. We were just talking about the big quilt and what it does and all of that. Sorry, do you know anything about the big quilt? Uh, I saw it mentioned in, uh, in the, the um, uh, HackMD for yesterday's meeting. Oh, cool. There you go. See, word gets out in mysterious ways. Um, so a couple Sundays ago, I had a call with a new acquaintance, a guy named Pat Scannell, who happens to be on a mailing list I'm on with a bunch of telecom geeks. And mm -hmm. I liked what he was saying. I just liked his comments a lot. They were very thoughtful. He's, he's going very deep on stuff. So I said, hey, let's just chat. So a couple Sundays ago when I'm in Fresno, uh, we, we have this chat that just turns into this crazy good conversation that brings up a bunch of old thoughts I had and congeals into this idea um, that I'm calling the big quilt. Um, at first I was calling it weaving the world, but the whole idea is to have some, to, to, to bring out of OGM to create a show because we're already doing a bunch of Zoom calls and recording them and posting them to YouTube. They just don't really have any framing around them other than, hey, here's a sequence of our calls. We could actually have sort of intentional meetings with people and, and do stuff, which on the surface looks like a show. And then under the hood does OGME stuff with everything, including making the artifacts easier to find, archiving them, and then deconstructing or analyzing them, uh, taking the, the different people's thinking and constructing models with them, uh, re, you know, connecting them to one another, uh, weaving this, this quilt. Basically the patchwork quilt analogy says um, that each of these is a beautiful on its own. I mean, every patch in a patchwork quilt has sort of local, local aesthetics. Um, but then how do we weave them into each other? So part of the OGME thing we would do is, is work the edges and figure out that, you know, donut economics is see, smells different from plan B, but really they overlap in these kinds of ways and, and then open up those explorations and then connect that out to education, connect that to journalism, connect that to science, to, to elections, to whatever over time um, and invite others to create their own channels doing the same thing in the same way. And in the process, begin to feed the commons all the time in the generative uh, commons agreement fashion, which is why I think this is interesting here as well. And in the process, prototype new ways of making a living in this whole process, because we would fund, we would, we would, part of what I would go out and solicit funds for is to fuel people who are playing roles in this ecosystem to, to, to you know, to, uh, to do the, the different kinds of new roles that we're envisioning, whether it's Pete's context weavers or my story threaders or somebody else's, whatever, um, what do those look like as possible career paths for people? And how does this new economy work so that people are making a living and the commons is being nourished and we get some attention for it being a public set of events that wind up being more interesting as you unpack them or as you pull apart the layers of the quilt in some sense. And I'm, I'm liking the quilt analogy a lot because it's a female, a typically traditionally a female art that's not durable. So we don't have a lot of quilts around, but it's one, you know, textiles are some of the earliest technologies, period. Um, they just didn't survive. It's a nourishing, warm, comforting thing. It's a team project when you do a, a quilting bee. Uh, it's, uh, it's, war it's about warmth and safety and the, the weaving of it is very connective. And Marc Antoine has long loved the, the, the metaphor of the loom and weaving. I like it too. I think of the brain as my modern loom for information for what we know. Uh, so a little subhead, subtitle could be weaving what we know or something like that. Um, Anyway, that's becoming an artifact that I'm excited about doing, partly because it takes a bunch of stuff we're already doing and really kind of focus it, focuses it, sharpens it, makes it more public, and maybe really importantly, makes it easier for me to pitch to wealthy people as how, how might I back this OGM thing you've got? Because until now, it was like, hey, there's a good idea. We're trying to feed the commons and figure some stuff out, and I want to fund some fellows. And as Pete pointed out, the fellowship thing is not, not easy or that attractive. Projects that build this new uh, environment are attractive. Mm -hmm. At least I think they are. So all feedback, welcome. Um, so I guess uh, my, my question on just the last part um, is what, what is the... Um, 
Um, what is the some connectivity problems here? Um, what is what is the difference in um, what is the difference in fundability in um, in OGM and the big quilt? I, I'm I'm just just a little more on that, just on like business model and, and maybe maybe by analogy, think of the big quilt as Sesame Street or something where it's a show for public benefit, uh -huh. and and you'd be funding that, but under the hood, it's actually a construction project to build out um, how we think together in the future and how we work together in the future. Ooh, I like that better than what I was saying before. And so, and so there's a piece of this, which is like a donation to PBS, but there's a piece of this, which is like a donation to the future. I want to say the highway system, but that sounds lousy. It's not just infrastructure. It's sort of a bunch of other things. And I think that that, that project, I, th I, think, I think there's a whole bunch, part of the pitch I think, is that there's a whole bunch of people and groups that are trying to figure out what the next economy and social system looks like. Is it sociocracy, holacracy, plan B, donuts, uh, triple bottom line, theory U, like all of these, every one of them, some of them have more overweening ambitions, uh, deep adaptation, you know, Jem Bendel. <clears throat> There's just like model after model after model after model. And uh, some of them are more platformy oriented. There's one called the, the Disco Co-op, which is really, really interesting. Uh, and there's a bunch of others. So I think part of the pilgrimage here, part of the exploration to find the patches to weave into the quilt is to go to these people who've got important bodies of work uh, and figure out how to bring their work into the larger picture in some sense. And I just combined two threads. I was, I was on one thread and I jumped off to a different one. Um, but, but there's a bunch of people who, who've got great ideas about this, how this is happening, we, who are going in all different kinds of directions. And a piece of what we kind of need is to figure out, um, I, think you, I think you've heard me say, one of the questions in the back of my head is, what are the next two platforms, <clears throat> right? What is the social platform and what is the organizational platform? And those things don't need to be separate. They may start yes. to sort of lead together with each other. But I, th I think that that's one of the background questions for the big quilt. It's like, and I also like the big quilt because it, it's not an overweening promise, like weaving the world is like, oh, right, you're going to do what? Uh, the big quilt is like, just think of this like as the AIDS quilt for information, right? This is a communally, communally created set of stories that weave together into, to try to tell a bigger story. In fact, a bigger story about social change, about things we need to get done. So the AIDS quilt metaphor, I think is nice as well in that way, right? Because the, the idea of bringing all the people who had been weaving pieces of the AIDS quilt together onto the mall in Washington and laying them all out end to end so people could see the scale of impact of AIDS was gigantic and memorable, right? And here we're talking about a virtual quilt. So that opens up, you know, Pete prefers natural metaphors that, that contain kind of the explosive growth or organic contagious nature of, of what, what we think we're doing. And I agree. But to me, we can kind of hack the system a bit by saying, all of that's interesting, but this is a virtual quilt and therefore <clears throat> it could be replicated. It doesn't have to have exactly match, you know, matching end parts. It's gonna have layers and, and other kinds of things. And, and then uh, Leif and Hank had mentioned a Danish artist named Sarah Verby, who is a textile artist who did a collective project <coughs> of weaving a forest. And she invited people in and had set up the project so that you could sort of sit down and pick a piece of it. And they were weaving seeds together into fabric, right? Uh, in, into, into an image that sort of made kind of a forest. I'll, I'll, I'll put a, a link in the chat in a second. But that, that's really interesting metaphorically also because if you sort of combine a quilt with a seed bomb and think that the quilt could contain seeds and they sprout and grow and do things, then you're in a different sort of space about what the metaphor is holding and what its potential is and all of that. So I like that image as well. Um, so stuff like that. And, and a piece of this is also an attempt to enact or live in the generative commons. A, a piece of this is like, we're not, this is not, 
I watched a, a documentary about uh, Sesame Street called Street Gang just a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> it's, it's a really good documentary. And I watched it in part because in 1998, a friend of mine took me out when I went off on my own, a friend of mine took me out to lunch and told me the story. Have you heard me tell the story of, of Sesame Street? <clears throat> okay. So the way he told me the story, and this sort of meshes with the documentary, but not perfectly. He said, Jim Henson was basically a puppeteer who was busking on the streets of San Francisco, showing up at puppet shows and on public TV and doing, and had this character called Kermit the Frog, who I think he'd invented. <clears throat> and he runs into a guy named uh, Lloyd Morissette. And Lloyd Morissette and Joan Gantz, Joan Gantz Cooney later, um, they, those two people say, hey, you're a good puppeteer. We could build something around you. And so they build Sesame Street, the Muppets, Children's Theater Workshop, this gigantic complex of stuff that becomes, that really changes the nature of educational TV for kids, right? Totally changes its nature. One of the low points of the documentary is that one of their hacks of the system was to use all this technology that was working well in advertising to teach kids. How do you capture attention, all of that? They, in fact, there's a, a small detail that you see in the documentary, which is they invented a thing they called a distractor, which is they had a TV, with a, a TV with a slideshow that was in the corner of the room where they were testing stuff. And if the kids lost the tension on their prototypes of Sesame Street and started watching the distractor, they knew that that show, that piece of the show wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. So they were doing a lot of sort of adver advertising and attention hacking, which I don't really want to do. I want to do passion hacking. I want to be like, this is actually trying to fix the world. And if we help do this together, we're, we might actually be getting somewhere one small sort of bite at a time. Go ahead, Stacey. I just want to make the point. They didn't try to change the kid's behavior, you know, in terms of that advertising hack. It wasn't about changing the behavior. It was about changing their behavior. So to me, that's a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. And they, and they, Sesame Street is strangely the show, sort of like Blue's Clues, the show that's not just good for kids, it's also sort of good for adults to watch. You can kind of sit there and watch along because there's a lot of stuff happening that, that's kind of funny for adults or, 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 or whatever in other kinds of ways. Anyway, there's, there's a whole bunch of details about Sesame Street. But since 1998, I've been looking for my Lloyd Morissette unsuccessfully. So I have a zillion ideas in my head. I just wanted to find somebody who wanted to like operationalize them and, and, and like say, yeah, that sounds great. Let's go build this. Um, and, and just haven't really gotten there. Uh, and that's just a side story here. But that idea plus um, I sat down next to Mitch Ratcliffe at a conference 25 years ago. And uh, I guess early, early, early internet days. And we both started talking about people we admired and we were gonna start a pilgrimage. We were gonna say, let's just do a show of some sort. Uh, or a, a series of blog posts. I, I don't remember what medium we were thinking about because he was a tech writer. Uh, let's just go visit these people. Let's make a pilgrimage to the people we admire, write about them and bring that into the same stream. And we, we actually never did that. We both got busy in completely different ways. But I loved that idea of visiting people who are thinking interesting things or communities that are doing interesting work. And one thing I didn't say here yet is that we would prefer to visit not the white guy led communities, but everybody else first. Let's, let's, go, let's go figure out <clears throat> what spiritual communities are doing, what communities of color are doing, how, you know, how, how the peace parts look from, from their side. And then let's weave that back, as I try to do in my brain, but on, in a little solo effort, weave that back into the general perspective of what we see and how things work. And my brain is sourdough starter for this, uh, again, mixing metaphors, because sourdough starter doesn't go well with quilts. Uh, but... The idea being, hey, everybody else who's doing stuff like this, bring your body of work in and weave it towards what the rest of us are trying to do and, and this whole intention. And then this morning I read Axios. I don't know if you guys get Axios, the news service. So the Axios has a piece that I read yesterday and they, re they reprinted it today about how Zuckerberg is taking Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook into, the, into the metaverse. Right, so Neil Stevenson's metaverse, and this is like uh, extended reality, enhanced reality, extreme reality, whatever, AR, all those kinds of things. But then I read in the middle of the piece, um, which I'm gonna repost to our channels, um, the, the principles of the metaverse are all about interoperability between across plant platforms and there's like the principles of the metaverse are not things that are fit comfortably with, with, with what Facebook is today. And they're principles that fit really nicely with what we're talking about. And I was like, if those principles hold, we should have a voice at the table for this emergent metaverse. 
So a piece of our show could easily be, and we've got friends who are doing lots of stuff in AR, XR, whatever, a piece of our show could easily be um, XR explorations into these data sets and these idea spaces and these communities. And that would fit very nicely. And a piece of what we would do there is how does XR manifestation of something fit with an outliner like Rome or a tool like the brain or, or, or like whatever, how do these things actually fit together and work together? And that gets me excited. And I, and I think I can pitch that and raise some funds for that. And if you don't think so, say so now. Because <laughs> no, no, I just I, I I I think that that sounds pitchable, but not in a way to me. It's not so much in a way that OGM doesn't. I guess it's a little bit. I mean, there there are um, there are probably fewer funders who would be more likely to go for, I mean, so OGM is, is bigger and vaguer. And, you know, there are a lot, a lot of different kinds of funders who might want to support that. Um, it sounds like the Big Quilt is a more specific vision that would be more attractive to certain funders, maybe not as broadly, but more intensely among you know, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a that's a this. Whereas, you know, somebody else might say, oh, it's a show that's sort of advancing these concepts. Yeah, I don't do that. You know, um, there there are people for whom it would cross it off the list. Right. That's there are probably true. more people who would yeah who would really identify with it. So, I mean, I think I think it's a good. I think it's a good idea. I think it's yeah. a a more precise a more it's a more concrete sure it's a more yeah. it's a more concrete thing and i should add that the 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 radar screen that the big quilt is drawing on is open global mind meaning the thesis of open global mind about open-mindedness and the need to bridge the cultural gap and the need to see uh what we all know together and all of that so the open global mind is kind of where we're aiming and the people we would visit would be people whose work in the world is creating some solutions to some part of that puzzle. So OGM winds up being the, the, the big screen at the end of the, at the, end of the hall or the, the overarching thesis or something like that. Yeah. And, and yeah, so I could, I could kind of pitch this as a show, think next generation Sesame Street of the metaverse. I can hear that coming out of my mouth and me going, nah. I can also pitch this to people who want to build the infrastructure that we see um, and shoot it from below ground. Basically, um, shoot a pitch that says, "For the Muggles looking up from above, from, from looking down from from the normal surface of daily life, this kind of looks like a show. But really, we're busy building the infrastructure that's needed for these new kinds of models to stand up, and we're prototyping it with other people. We're connecting into communities that are already using, you know, blockchain alternatives to do information whatevering." Et cetera, et cetera. So I could I could totally switch perspectives on it. That makes a lot of sense. So, um, do you have a business model in mind in terms of how it would? Um, so I think my framing for pitching funders is the same as it was before, which is, um, which is I need I, I need to find us or buy us a year or two of runway where we figure out what the various business models are and prototype some of the business models with initial funding. And the initial funding sets us up to produce a show and then to fund projects that take bites out of the infrastructure we need and the other stuff that's happening below ground. And we can we can frame those up. We can we can make a pretty dashboard that says here's what the projects are, here's what their OKRs are, here's how they're hitting their numbers, here's who they're supporting. And all of that. that that can be made really quite visible uh, under the project and then um, here are some uh, and as i was saying in the initial pitch i had for ogm and here's an investment pool where if, if we have more slack and more funds than the projects we have on deck we can actually invest some money in some of the organizations that are building out some piece of this of this uh, joint commons and do some co-funding through the ecosystem so i think like that yeah, I mean that that to me is where as an investor I get like hmm you know am I 
Well, right. you're, you're busy investing in the, hopefully the next socio-technical platform, right? As, with, with, with a, a sense that I am um, philanthropically supporting or that I am buying a piece of? First mover, not, buy, not getting to own a piece of, but you, I, think, I think we have to agree that the next platform only works if it's collectively owned and, and created. But if it's if it's really actually very active and if there's a lot of value moving through it, everybody who plays makes uh, makes a good living, and so you'd get to build out the first pieces of the platform that get that get paid for as a service, uh, you know, as SaaS, you know, metaverse uh, the mass basically, uh, metaverse as a service. I'm just saying that jokingly, but but if you're a first mover into this environment, you get to figure out what business services. So the part I forgot to say in this last little riff is that. A piece of what I also think we're funding is standing up some for benefit ventures that live inside of this ecosystem that help a new series of people, um, a new a new series of job titles emerge uh, as 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 skills that organizations and 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 neighborhoods and communities need. Who are context weavers, map whisperers, story threaders, what have you, and that those people ought to be paid. Those people, in fact, are making a living by helping us build this whole thing. And a piece of what we're doing is setting up an ecosystem or an economy for them. So that they're not just, hey, I put up a website on Wix and good luck finding me. I still end up feeling like I, I don't have a handle on, on... on a on a general either business proposition or um or um completely benevolent donation and i know i know you're trying to straddle those things in a way right um, but I'm trying, I, to, I'm trying to fund the prototyping of business models that would then spin out <clears throat> as for benefit businesses doing those things which would need platforms and you know so forth and i think that's one of the opportunities for for other companies owned by the entity that are they would be the they would be they would be collectives or DAOs. they would own themselves we would stand them up we would prototype them and say here's what this thing looks like and then once they sort of became an organization they could sort of bubble up collect up and become an org of whatever model it turns out at that time makes the most sense for the kind of work that we're all doing And, and I, I agree with your questions and your skepticism right now, because this is like a freaking complex thing still. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, you know, I've been in enough like pitch meetings and, 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 you know, it's like, there are different angles to come at things from. Um, and there's, you know, what's in it for, for you, the donor investor, um, what's in it for the world, what's in it for a combination of you and the world, what's in it for, yeah. you know, I mean, just all, all different things. And, and I'm just like worried about it being too amorphous. You know, I, I just, you know, the, the, you know, we're not a nonprofit or a for-profit and we're a collective and we're going to stand up for profits that are like benefit you know it's like it's a high I mean, it doesn't it doesn't it's not like it sounds bad it just yeah. sounds unclear to me i mean just as a as a you know uh well what if i say it, 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 it sounds a little a little too give us money and we're not sure what's going to happen exactly but it's going to be toward this end yeah and it might or might not be you know it might or might not make you make money for you or the people in this or 
you know, or end up with IP that was valuable and used by other, it, it just, it just sounds well, the a little IP, too. Yeah, the IP created needs to be shared so that everybody gets the benefit from it. Um, everybody and, meaning the whole world or everybody in this entity? And everybody meaning the whole world. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, everybody meaning the whole world. I, I mean, this is all, I'm assuming this is all uh, powered, sort of powered by or informed by OGM uh, pledging to the generative commons agreement. Like that's on the footer of every, of the, of every page of the website, for example, right? Uh, so, that, so that all these efforts are, are meant to sort of stand up uh, kind of the next economy. And I just like to mix more metaphors, like I think what, what somebody might be funding is the star nursery for the next ecosystem <clears throat> because the next ecosystem is gonna be really varied. It's just, everybody's not gonna to want to adopt the same business model. It's not that everybody's gonna adopt holacracy and work on glass frogs. That ain't happening. Mm -hmm. And if that happened, it'd probably be a bad thing. Um, it's that they're going to be a multiplicity of entities using a multiplicity of business models. And if we can align them, if we can collimate them, if we can collect them up so that they're working more or less in harmony toward a generative commons in whatever guise and with, with whatever business model they're coming in with, if they're still contributing to the, to the generative commons and if they're prototyping the business models that we're gonna need because we're running out of full-time employment. As far as, I, as far as I can tell, corporations are working as hard as they can to eliminate full-time employment. Uh, and industry after is industry and, and it's, it's basically like retail Hardly anybody is full-time employed in retail. Everybody's work, you know, many people, I mean, Amazon warehouse workers are working way long, but most retail stores are trying to give their people shifts under 30 hours so they don't have to pay benefits, right? And so you get more employees, make sure nobody's scheduled over 30 hours and suddenly you don't have a benefits problem. That's horrifying because none of those are actually jobs where you can make a living, including the fact that they're, that they're you know, the wages are super low and, and so forth. Um, so, and then automation is showing up and knocking out job after job. And I think, I think a, a huge, a huge, an important piece of our inquiry is what is the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning in, the, in our future ecosystem? And I think a lovely quest there is, what does it mean to become a cyborg worker? How, you know, or a centaur worker, there's a couple names for this, but basically uh, my brain is kind of like a cyborg extension of me. So I'm, I'm, I'm all, I already see myself as half cyborg worker because I've externalized a set of what I know and what I care about in a way that's useful when I step away. Not mm -hmm. that useful because it's stuck inside of this damn brain tool, but some people know how to, how to harness it without me. Um, hopefully through this whole project, it, it gets vastly more useful alongside everybody else's thinking and working toward you know, weaving this together. But, but, but a piece of that inquiry is we visit people who are busy exploring um, technology as human extension instead of human replacement. You know, enhance or replace is kind of the phrase that, that April and I both use. Uh, oh, sorry, augment or replace. <clears throat> that, that's the moral choice that companies have. And right now, they're doing a lot of replace, mm -hmm. a lot of replace. And nobody knows, like, there's like a sort of Damocles uh, hanging over every worker, kind of in the world, slowly, uh, because they don't know when their particular set of, job, set of skills is going to be automated. And it's mm -hmm. no longer just robots. It's white collar work left, right, and center because, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because GPT-3 can now write prose as well as your average writer. And, and, uh, I'm, and this leads down a bunch of side conversations like, I don't believe that, um, <clears throat> that uh, artificial general intelligence, that uh, uh, some software entity that thinks like us and is logical and all different things sort of like us is gonna show up. But I think that task after task is gonna, going to get eaten away. I think that on a, on a task level, it's really easy to outperform humans. There, there are x-ray reading applications now, per, uh, algorithms that do better than x-ray technicians at finding tumors and anomalies in x-rays. And they don't get tired and they perform better over time and they don't need retirement funding. Mm -hmm. And for something like reading an x-ray, or you can probably think of a bunch of other examples where there are legal implications for getting it wrong, algorithms that perform better are going to win that race. I don't, I think it's inevitable and I don't need to eliminate my entire job. I just need to take out 30% of what I do. That's really valuable. And my job is in jeopardy. So 
long, sorry to take a long time there, but I think one of the explorations of open global mind and the new economy is how does that play out and how do we make it play out well for humans, right? Uh, meanwhile, there's a bunch of other conversations and explorations about, does that mean everybody deserve, needs a basic income and how does that work? And does that kill incentives or make incentives and who's had experiments in basic income? And you know, how, it, it, if basic income is a Band-Aid or, or a soft quilt to land on as we automate away work, how's that playing out? And then we use our, our shared infrastructure to say, here's open, here's big juicy open questions, right? Here, here, are, here are the big questions in our inquiry right now. We're trying to figure this out, this out, this out, this out. And so the way we schedule whom to visit next is they're chewing on one of these big questions and they're, you know, et cetera. All of which makes me excited because I can see how the agenda, the OKRs, what we're funding and all that could be openly visible and available. So somebody coming in could say, oh, here's, here's a tribe, a hive of people honoring diversity, meaning including the confusing mess of diverse business models, uh, diverse points of view about how this thing works, all of that, honoring the diversity, yet working together toward solving for how do we fix these civilization level problems? And I love that. I love that as a purpose and sort of general organizing structure. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd watch the show for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like for sure. Um, I'm, uh, and, and like I say, I, I almost feel like if you went to pitch the show to people who, you know, underwrite, PBS shows or, you know, like whatever, you know, it's like that it's, you know, the corporation for, you know, public broadcasting. Well, I mean, uh, I was, I was trying to think of a, you know, as you were saying, sort of the grown ups television workshop, you know, right. Right. Um, uh, this, this is an attractive concept. Um, and and I only get not stop, just you know, slightly you confused, know, just, confused uh, uh, and yeah. skeptical <laughs> when it comes to, and it's going to overarch all this stuff that's going to happen that you know right. we're going to like stand up, support, uh, like. That you know, there there are so many different um, as we as we would say in you know graph mapping terms. There are so many different edges between these nodes, like you know, and and things moving in different directions. That I start to go, this is a little bit, you know, megalomaniac about you know about what it's trying to be underneath the show. You know, the show got it cool concept just like what what is it and i mean you know it's it's the same question i sometimes like ask about ogm because i mean i feel like what you're sort of saying about the show is new but what's underneath it is just very ogm -y. it's um, very ogm -y. yeah it's, this is this is meant to manifest ogm right in a way that's more tractable more palpable more concrete more actionable maybe more fundable yes well, but I mean, I guess I almost feel like the OGM problem still exists. The, the fundability of this is about this. It's about the show and the, the problems with feeling totally gung-ho about OGM as more than a general idea, as more than a congregation of like-minded people is how OGM works. And this, if, if you think of the big quilt as one like fundable OGM project, project, great, you know, and still, still have the problem. And I, I don't, problem is a harsh, harsh term, but still have the like lack of clarity on like, you know, how it all works and, and where the, the money and ownership and, and, um, and roles are, um, I mean, the nice thing about a show is, you know, a show 
takes like, okay, there are, there are gonna be these, you know, these production costs and these transportation costs and these like, mm -hmm. you know, it takes this many people reasonably to do that thing because people have done it before. Great. And uh, yeah, so I guess it's that, you know, just the, just that, I'm not. I'm not trying to rain on the parade of the show at all. I think I don't. Show... I don't feel like you are. I think you're asking really great questions. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate them a lot. And and I'm busy trying to explain it in a way that may, might make sense to others as we go. And so I think we're we're making it better. So thank you. Um, and it does feel to me like like the big quilt is an OGM production, and that OGM sure. is still is still you know, at this point is, is sort of sheltered under a nonprofit. So it's technically kind of acting like a nonprofit. The funding I'm trying to attract up front is grant funding for that nonprofit. So for a year or so, OGM would act as a nonprofit to set this up. Uh, then it would prototype a, a bunch of things, which then could spin out. And part of, <clears throat> part of what I think, and we come back a bit to the Lionsburg conversation about steward ownership and whether that's the right way to do it. But one of the compelling reasons why Jordan loves steward ownership is that once you have that, it, it creates this stable platform from which you can, it's a springboard, you can launch a bunch of other things uh, that can. Hey, look, I'm just, just for, maybe this will help my understanding. Let's just talk about Lionsburg for a second and what besides OGM Lionsburg is doing um, and what kind of entities it's already. <laughs> So I, yeah, so I don't so I don't know the I don't know the wide variety of, of entities in Lionsburg flotilla to call it that. Um, or from you know from the top of their mass. But one big one is OFC, uh, the open what are they called? Uh, uh, open Future Coalition. That's it. <clears throat> so um so the Open Future Coalition, and we just got a briefing uh, from Katie, uh, Caitlin Archambault, Katie. Uh, we just got a briefing from them. They're building out a platform that does a piece of this, that is trying to help uh, basically, uh, that is trying to help entities organize up around projects that have, and I'm, I'm totally gonna butcher what I saw because I'm not remembering it very vividly right now, but basically <clears throat> to help make visible and measurable the actions of people trying to build out um, all these different uh, nonprofits and, and for benefit social impact projects. Um, and so they're they're busy designing a platform. They're they're trying to sort of be late binding or or whatever in in what are, what actual software is inside the design. But they're pretty far down that down that path. And it could be that a piece of our activity uses their platform. Uh, to do this work and to measure it and to put sort of dashboards up. That's possible, right? Um, then, uh, and so Jordan has been kind of recruiting and casting a pretty broad net. I think there's some projects in Africa he's supporting that are doing kind of stuff on the ground, uh, whether it's education or supporting small workers, I don't know, and I've forgotten who. Uh, I think this is sort of, sort of a question for Jordan. He's become kind of a collector of ventures like us uh into this new ecosystem and partly what he's favoring is he's trying to pick little ventures that are certainly ethically or morally aligned with lionsburg and, and its goals but are also building out different parts of this ecosystem and one of the reasons he likes ogm is that we appear to be focused on a bunch of different moving parts that matter a lot uh to the future of this ecosystem and so, but in terms of <clears throat> whether the entities, I'm also, I'm looking at the Lionsburg site to yeah, yeah. become a co-creator blurb, which I've looked at ways back, but. Um, uh, uh, and just, yeah. to, just to add complexity, <clears throat> um, my dear friend, John Borthwick and I had a couple of great conversations. He should be coming back from vacation shortly. But he asked the question, is OGM a DAO? And right, you mentioned that, oh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, that's a really good question. And I don't know, and does a, can a DAO coexist or can a DAO be the, the structure for a steward owned enterprise? Don't know, I, I don't know if those things are mutually exclusive or compatible, I have actually no good idea. Um, but for me, that's a really interesting question. 
um, to hold up several different compelling future models and say, hey, do they work together? Do they not? Do they feed the commons? How do, they, how do these things operate? I think that's a great set of questions to start asking. <clears throat> I can, yeah, uh, we can put a couple links to Lionsburg. <clears throat> Um, why could I, um, why couldn't they work together? The whole idea of a DAO is within their own organization. They do what they want, but they're still going to make agreements with other DAOs, at least the way I'm I, saying it. I think I, it works perfect. Okay. I think so. Um, I, I, I have no reason to think not, but I've been surprised before <laughs> with assumptions I make like that, <clears throat> where it turns out that there's some kind of a poison pill aspect to uh, something that doesn't that is incompatible with some other founding premise of some other piece of work or something like that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> So Lionsburg AEC, Lionsburg Elevate, Lionsburg Legacy Real Estate. Yes, they seem to be That's building all. out several several different moving parts. And they so so Jordan comes out of construction. Yeah. And there were several construction companies, Rock Force Construction and Sukut Construction, that I think his grandfather founded, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, are kind of where he's coming from. And um, it's interesting because the reason I'm, I, I'm liking the quilt analogy a lot is that the day after it showed up for, uh, for me, um, I was in the, the Lionsburg, the Jordan run call for Yannick Silver's One Degree Network <clears throat> in which we did, we broke up into a workshop. It was, it was like a, a two hour session where he was trying to get everybody into projects to agree to stuff, which I, I, I think was pretty rough. It, it was sort of bumpy. But when we came back and convened, um, uh, the, the facilitator asked, so like, how do we explain this thing simply enough to a five-year-old? And I, I, I offered up, it's like we're weaving a quilt together. And that just like stuck. That everybody was like, mm, sounds great. And partly it may have stuck because it was low hanging fruit. It was easy to, to say, okay, good. But I think partly it sticks because quilt is kind of understandable. And everything else I said to try to explain what this venture is, is much less understandable. And, and that's bad because the, a good idea should be pretty crystalline. Um, but the quilt is just this nice, soft, gentle central point. And I, I'm really aware that the, a lot of the communities I've helped create attract white guys. And I want an analogy that isn't a white guy analogy to, as a starting point. I want something that isn't, that isn't like, like we're going to weave the brain knowledge of the world into a, the Uber knowledge management system. I'm like, bullshit, right? Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying hard to steer toward something that may not be comfortable for people like me, which is great, you know, and without, cultural appropriation without anything else, but sort of creating a place that's welcoming to really different people. Because I'm, despite the Kevin Jones kerfluffle and, and all of that kind of stuff, I'm aware that his anger is well-rooted and well-placed. His forms of expression on that anger don't work very well for me and actually aren't very productive for me. But uh, he's, you know, we absolutely need to, to, to start uh, not by serving us, but by serving someone not like us. So, so yes, I'm like, I'm totally on board for that and trying to figure out how to make this work. And, and I think that there's lots of really interesting sub stories that's been out of this and men, and, and I'm really interested in this becoming 
I was saying this, Stacey, just as you came in, I think that what if this is a completely different iHeartRadio kind of from the surface where iHeartRadio is a podcast aggregator. They're totally like, they're like the rebirth of commercial radio. They're a modern radio station and I don't like them. But, but what if we're a collection of storytellers? Pardon? Clear Channel. They're a channel, exactly. They're no, channel. no, Clear Channel. Oh, Clear the, Channel, yeah, yeah, yeah. The entity that, that owns them is-, is Oh, that's right. They're, they're, they're not they're, liking <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Speak of, speaking of not liking. They're the, warm, <laughs> or the warm and fuzzy face of Clear Channel. Yeah, exactly. Because they've got a heart in their logo. Hmm, yeah, hey, yeah. isn't that cool? Yeah, um, a couple of friends of mine used to work for them. Uh, mm, okay. So what if we're like an ethical, interesting, distributed, future-oriented replacement for those kinds of things, where we can become a collection place for lots of different story storytellers who are weaving their narratives together into a durable fabric that is more useful than mere video records of calls, which is what we've got now from everybody, right? It's, it, right now, it's pretty easy to go back and visit everybody's podcast episodes or vlog episodes and listen to them. And that's kind of a problem because I don't have the hour and a half to listen to every one of Daniel Schmachtenberger's interviews. Mm -hmm. And he has very little long form stuff out there. It's all, hey, you get to slog through this whole thing. And I could really use sort of collective intelligence on this to figure out, okay, great. So where do I, what are the pieces I want to listen to and how do they fit the larger puzzle? Well, how do they fit into the big quilt? So, and, and this is, uh, I feel like this conversation is a little circular sometimes, but so like there's no shortage of people out there who are, who are endeavoring to do that kind of thing in different ways and is. And separately trying to attract attention and audience and some kind of revenue model. Sure, and, and often separately trying to like figure out ways to work with each other. That's great. And, if we can solve all those problems for them somehow. Yeah, but I, I, I guess I hear, I mean, my frustration is like, you can solve all those problems for them somehow. I, mean, like I can really like, a, like, you know, OGM, you, we, all of us know better than the people who've been striving to do this and, and you know, have succeeded in certain ways and not in others. And, and it's, it's where I worry about like the ability to attract them without a clear sense that that we are not competing with them, that we are like looking for like, I mean, Lionsburg, Lionsburg, it seems pretty clear is, you know, Lionsburg Foundation is looking to support people are, who are doing good things. If you're doing something cool, come to us and you know, we'll give you money and connect you maybe with other people that we're working with. We want to see this work happen. Um, but we're not ourselves engaged in the work or, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not telling you this is the way you should all do it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just it's sort of it's sort of like uh, the benevolence versus um, versus uh, governance. You know, I, I, I know governance is, you wouldn't take it that far, but I you know when you say things like you know we'll tell you how you know you've been failing. Now we're going to tell you how. I, I, it, it's hard I don't think that's the approach. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I don't think it's we know better. I think it's we have an experiment here. We have a theory that the future ecosystem doesn't look like the present. It doesn't look like monolith platforms and winner take all markets. Sure. It doesn't look yeah. like 
it doesn't look like this the the stake uh, like the stalker economy or the sur or surveillance capitalism Absolutely. And, and 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 there are hundreds and hundreds of really great entities out there prototyping these things struggling to get attention and to figure out how to make a living doing this thing we have a we have a theory that if we sort of collect up and start to start to do things in a, in a particular framework an ogme framework that this might actually sort of click into place and we might find some resonance and if we built and and part of the theory is that nobody's leaving behind a shared artifact of what we know that we have no collective memory we're not making sense of the world together we're just spinning more episodes right yeah okay i mean i guess i feel like i'm, I'm sorry if i'm if i'm uh hmm. don't apologize you're asking great questions well i'm trying to think of a way to say this other than i don't think you're saying anything that those people don't already know so so why is nobody doing this everybody's I, doing this i mean I, they're not reaching mean, across everybody's everybody's busy with their own set of ideas trying to get more attention for their ideas very few very few are bridging and trying to build like the the, the a collective yet diverse uh system well i don't, see, I don't yeah, see many i don't see many initiatives doing that i i guess i i differ on that. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, as as one of the entities that both, you know, like sees the need for for like our collective memory and, you know, to be assembled and to be available and to have it not, ooh, let's hoard it all and live have it live on our platform, but let's figure out how we can have it, you know, interoperate between our platform and other platforms and what you know common common rules on a playing field we can set so that we can do i mean like the business model issues to me are the biggest problems like you know what is it that we're doing are we if we say we're cooperating are we cooperating in a in a network of co-ops are we cooperating in an adversarial um uh what's uh competitive term. um uh competitive yeah but competitive um it's like competitive zero zero, zero sum oh then, uh co-opetition no uh no it's uh he has a, a adversarial um maybe it's a, a, adversarial interoperability it's basically huh? why it's basically why you can open a Word document in pages is not because, you know, Apple and Microsoft. Adversarial interoperability is a piece Cory Doctorow wrote. Yeah, be. yeah, okay, okay, so that's it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, whether it's adversarial interoperability, like actual cooperation, um, we're all co-ops with each of us having a stake in each other that, you know, we're, you know, how, how we form the business relationship that allows the endeavor that we all agree on to move forward in a more coordinated way. Um, I don't think there's any knowledge that we as OG, I mean, I, this, you know, I have the, the same conversations in CTA and, you know, with New Public and with, the, you know, at MozFest and, you know, we're all having the same conversations that OGM has. Right, and that's true. With, you know, with, I don't mean to say the same because, you know, OGM is a wonderful collection of And completely people. unique in the world. What's that? And completely unique in the world, of course. Well, I mean, it is, but, you know, not in, the, it's the way in which it's not unique is that it sees these problems and sees, you know, that, that, you know, that, Jerry's brain and Factor and Trove and you know um, Kiko Lab and you know and Junto and Mastodon and you know all all these things need to like work together and there need to be aspects of them that are are like information repositories that are accessible to everybody. They need to not be attention sucking. They need to have like economic models. Like I feel like. We all get that, and unless we're, um, 
saying, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer to that sentence, you know, um, but, I, but I do feel like there's most of the people who were, who were on this mission, whether it's um, the digital standard with, with um, you know, uh, consumer reports involved or new public or, um, you know, uh, Ethan Zuckerman and his, you know, academic, you know, reinventing the internet, you know, and, and so, I mean, they're just all these, not exactly parallel, but, you know, totally well-meaning and totally like, let's get on the same page and do this. They're frankly a lot further along in, yeah. in many senses of weaving people together than OGM is. For sure. I mean, most and, nobody is because we're just uh, Nathan. Yeah, and I, I worry that we like think too much of ourselves. I mean, we're like, you know, that 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 we that we have some special sauce and some answer that's going to be enough to draw all these people who are already trying to like come together in other ways. Um, to us and it, it especially, and the reason I often harp on the business model is because it especially feels, you know, like I don't, be, because of the, the org structure, the nonprofitness of like, and the, and the established, um, you know, values and track record of a consumer union, consumer reports, I'm like much more inclined to, to nestle under their wing or, you know, or risk the possibility that I'm losing, for lack of a better term, I mean, I hate one loss and I think it's one of the big problems with everything we're talking about is like people are trying to figure out how they win um, but, you know, if, if, if through some interaction with the digital standard and, and, um, consumer union and new public, um, you know, factor ended up being subsumed and like, that was, it was part of one bigger thing, like, th that's a more comfortable risk for me as one of the people in this ecosystem to take then this kind of squishy, like I'm not sure, like if I, if I handed factor to OGM right now and just said, I mean, not, not wash my hands of it, but you know, yeah. like, I still want to support it, still want to be it, you know, what, right. but, I'm putting it in OGM's hand, that would feel very risky and unknown. As smart as the group of people and as, as much affection as I have for them um, as compared to like these other entities. And I'm trying to put myself, you know, there are a lot of, I'm, I'm not saying there are like slews and slews of factors out there, but there are definitely, you know, we intimately know at least a half dozen yeah. or I do, you know, that are, are really, how, how do we do this? How do we do this? And, and, and I think it's hard for us to look at OGM as an answer to that question. And I sometimes feel like it is trying to present itself that way. I mean, at least in, in your mind, Jerry, and, and, and you know, possibly um, others. And, I, and I'm, I'm really torn because you're, you're I, I agree with what you're saying a lot. Um, I put the link to Street Gang in the chat because, because at the very start of Street Gang, they show you what children's TV looked like before Sesame Street. Yeah. And it was a pile of doo-doo. It was commercial programs. Oh, sure. they, were, they were selling candy. Yeah. Uh, they were treating kids badly. It was just, it was just offensive. It was, it was actually sort of offensive, bad well, stuff. I mean, kids. and, and, and you know, kind of evil in the way that that attention. I mean, it was total attention economy. You know, before there was social media, in the sense that it was like, you know, 
Saturday morning when the folks are sleeping late, you know, we can like instill these Go desires. take a dollar from mommy and daddy's wallet and ma mail it to this address. Right, right. And, and also, you know, boys play with guns, girls play with dolls, you know, um, Susie Homemaker, you know, whatever. So, so I'm putting that in the conversation right now, partly because the insight that uh, Morissette and, and Gans had was to treat children with respect and to flip the model. And they, they did something completely differently that basically changed children's TV forever. And they were probably one of many different efforts alive at the time. They're the one that survived that won that particular mm -hmm. round in a, in a market where they didn't have room for a whole bunch of, you know, of children's theater workshops probably. Um, and later you get competitors like Blue's Clues and, and so forth, but, but really sure. not, electric company, whatever, but not a lot. Anyway, um, I think that there's lots of people trying to do this. I think that many, not all of the efforts of trying to figure out how to glue all this together and make the next big thing are working at it from traditional points of view about a lot of stuff, about standing up completely for-profit separate ventures, about siloed data, about staying with advertising or the stock or economy. They're, they're working, they're well-intentioned and working towards solving for the big puzzle, but they're doing so with really old school lenses. And it's really hard to actually see how this new upside down thing works. Because you have to let go of a lot of things that you thought that other people might think are essential for this. So I think that OGM is one of many, but a small crew of entities that are, that are seeing the world upside down in what I think is the right way for the future, for a civilization that might actually work for all, to borrow a little bit of, of Jordan language. Um, um, and I have no concept that we're better or writer, or certainly we're not farther along because we're just in conversation stage. We have really no rubber on the road. Um, and if I were to meet the people who are doing this much better, I'd be like, can I join you? And can we meld into you and offer our energy to what you're doing? Because you've clearly sorted more of this out than we have. And I love your moving parts and all of that. So, so there's this like, let's not reinvent the wheel general idea in OGM, which would apply to the whole entity. Like if I, if, if, if somebody out there is like jamming on this, let's help them succeed. But I don't see the entity that, that's, that's fixing the different sort of seams and parts in a way that we can, I think, contribute uh, in particular because we've got a collection of like genius mappers and context weavers and a, a bunch of other things that, that I don't, I see little, I see lots of little spotty communities of people doing personal knowledge graphs and stuff like that. And it's like, awesome. But really, there's a much bigger yeah. puzzle to it, for example. I mean, I, I guess I feel like, you know, if you spent as much time deeply talking to, I mean, like, OGM to me is a unique experience in talking to the same people, you know, very frequently, very deeply about the same thing, you know, at least once a week, if not <laughs> three or four times. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and and um, and I don't feel a if I feel if I feel qualitative differences here, I feel like, you know, the IQ is, um, you know, the IQ is like through the roof um, and the life experience is great. I would rate us really highly there in the practical application arena. I would say there's a lot more happening in, in other conversations and I wish that they were, I mean, what, what I credit OGM for is like the, and, and you personally is like bringing this much intellectual firepower into the room and keeping it there, you know, for the most part, I mean, like people wander off and stuff like that, but you know, we're, we're all, and, and maybe it's partly because we're not dealing with the, the, the practical shit of like, I mean, you know, like um, I was in a meeting with, um, with folks from the Center for Humane Tech who are trying to do uh, a curriculum for like, you know, teaching what should and shouldn't be done with technology platforms for technologists so that there's like a more of a 
you know, it's like you, short of unionizing all of the people who make every software product and having a universal stance to say, no, we won't work for, you know, attention like sucking platforms. Right. We can at least, you know, teach and educate all those people so that they're at least more skeptical of the, of the negative aspects of what they're doing. And there's like this, you know, eight module, um, you know, each module having like six or seven chapters curriculum that, you know, we're this, this, they pulled together this group of people who all, you know, come at it from different stakes and we're all going through the curriculum and we're all saying, hey, you know, this really seems like it, it has so much political baggage that you're going to lose anybody, you know, if you, if you say it this way, like everybody right of center is going to say, oh, this is a bunch of liberal claptrap. I'm not, I'm not buying into this. Why don't we frame it this way? You know, and we're making something that is like already has a bunch of people lined up in the queue who are going to take this course. And like, that's practical. And, and in CTA, we're like, you know, batting out like a, you know, profile schema and like what things can be shared. And, and we're in the heavens, you know, like wanting to solve decision-making for the world, but the practical pieces, I, I'm, I'm overstating it. You know, I'm sorry, I'm being a little bit well, <laughs> hyperbolous, you know. Uh, uh, well, I agree, with, I agree with you a lot, except the purpose of these calls that we're sitting in right now, a little over time, is to build a general generative commons agreement that we wanted to post publicly, that we wanted to yeah. try to riff on, and like offer to the to the to the world as, hey, this might be an interesting framing for how to work together. That like we're yeah. here to try to create something really concrete, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah, no, it's First true. Call, and I, I'm, said, I'm talking. But, I'm talking more about OGM because okay. of you starting off with the quilt and then and the yeah. relationship to OGM. I'm not talking about the common yeah. as much, but. Uh, well, but I think OGM is is riddled with little things that want to be practical that are trying to get birth that are stuck in the birth canal, like like, like everywhere, like uh -huh. like constantly, you know, and and for a variety of reasons. So in the first of these calls, I said, hey, I went out and I bought generativecommons.org, and Pete was like, well, you need to put that in yeah. like immediately into a new entity that is in the commons, and I'm like, WTF? Yeah. Right. And then for a variety of reasons, including that what we're chewing on is pretty big. We've had a bunch of like highfalutin 30,000 foot, 50,000 foot. And now 50,000 feet doesn't sound high enough because of Branson and, uh, and yeah, yeah. Bezos. So it's like- we're Beyond, uh, beyond the, the whatchamacallit line. The whatchamacallit line is 62,000 yeah. feet or something yeah, like yeah. that. Like the, in, into the Kuiper belt. I don't know. But, but, but also like I own wedontstock.com, which I bought some time ago. And I was like, what if, what if organizations just took a pledge? Forget the union. But yeah. what if we took a pledge and the pledge says, hey, we, we need to collect your personal data, but we will never sell it. We don't reuse it. We use it to make your experience better, blah, 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 blah. There's an, in, there's an interesting narrative there. It's not a thing, right? Um, sure. And, because, and, and if you, to put the, the practical, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I, I would love the funding and focus and paid dedication of a bunch of people to actually go put these things in the world and, and make them available and meld them with other people's thinking and whatever else it takes to get this all to like fly. That's part of part of why I'm trying to pitch some funding for OGM slash uh, the big quilt. Um, and so I, I also in the chat to remind myself, I put a different question to you, which is you've asked great questions and I totally agree. And like, what would solve the problem for you? What, what could OGM focus on that would be realistic, palpable, backable, et cetera? Well, I mean, I think I've been quilt I've for a while. Kind of said this, just that I would I would feel like, and, and I don't know how this works in with the relationship to Lionsburg, which I almost feel like is, you know, Lionsburg is a promise 
that in some ways gives a, I mean, it's, it's not an open checkbook, I realize, but it's, you know, it's a checkbook supercharger um, and, and it's, a, and it's a, an excuse to avoid for the moment, the entity question, you know, it kicks that can down the road because Lionsburg's an open nonprofit that people can give to and Lionsburg is gonna like match funds that can be raised. But, um, but in terms of, you know, what I think would solve the OGM problem I see is if, um, if OGM, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> the concept of the donor advised fund, mm -hmm. that like, you know, okay, I'm going to give all this stuff to charity, but I'm not really sure what yet. So I'm going to put it all in this donor advised fund. And then I'm going to decide how to dole it out. This is be sort of the opposite of the donor advised fund. It's like, I want this to do good, but I'm not sure where it should end up. And I need an entity that is funding other entities. And so I'm looking for, you know, in, in this vision, OGM to be the entity to which I, as a person with the purpose of supporting um, global shared knowledge and, you know, and, and any of a bunch of other principles that we would lay out, I'm going to give my money to OGM and OGM is going to figure out where to put it. But I know OGM isn't going to do it for their own benefit. They're going to do it for the benefit of the world. And I don't have to worry about like, oh, the money isn't going to get given. If they decide that, hey, Consumer Union is doing the best on this, we're going to give some money to Consumer Union and New Public is doing best on this, we're going to do this and this you know, like Global South, you know, technology initiative, we're gonna put some money over there. And like, we're certainly not gonna just play dumb and just hand out money. We're definitely gonna be humans who connect humans to other humans. But our, our goal is for this to happen. Our assumption is that we're not, well, while our, conception of what the problems are in the world is going to govern how we dole out that money, we're not assuming that we're the people who know best and are going to actually execute on it. And there's not going to be like in-house coding going on and projects that are official OGM projects as opposed to OGM projects that are supported. And I know that, that I see that furrowing your brow and I know that's different than what you Imagine no, no, no not at all. But I mean, I, I'm just saying that I think it would be a much, a much easier story to tell, and you'd have like basically it, it allows this open net, and you know, and and people. It's like it puts OGM in the position of like we want to know everything that's going on outside of us because we want to identify what the best of it is and everybody outside of you like we want to tell our story in the terms that meet OGM's values so that we can submit a grant application because you know and like in some cases it might be OGM saying okay this year we're giving six you know Let's let's be let's be ambitious. We're be, being we were six giving million. Six, six one million. I was I thought. One oh come million. on, come on. Okay. Five all right, all right. Six okay, trillion, giving, next for six trillion. Okay, um, but I, I was just going to say that <laughs> yeah. with specific like problem solve. We want we want there to be you know uh, um, a universal login that does not compromise that you know is is OAuth with a conscience that doesn't compromise like what people are doing and their data sovereignty and all that. And we see that, you know, you 
Kalia Young identity women woman and then this like entity over here are working on that and that you know you um, digital standard are working on that and, and so like we're we've identified you six as the people who are doing the best work on that and we're giving you each uh, a million bucks to like make that happen mm -hmm. or 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 we've said we've looked and we've said that one of you is doing the best job and we want to elevate you over the others and we're going to give you more money and try and steer the other folks to like jump on your bandwagon um but that we're really like trying to be the the supportive foundation more than to be another player in the game who has a different, slightly different theory than everybody else already has that, you know, is, wants to be one standard to rule them all, but still wants to be its own standard. And therefore, you know, the cartoon, the classic theme, now there are 15 standards instead of 14. <clears throat> right. So, so that's my spiel. <laughs> so I like it. Um, a couple things. What you described, so what you described is kind of the third piece of what I've been pitching already. So the video that I, that I, that I did cut a while ago, which was fellows oriented instead of project oriented. But if you were to swap in projects and take out fellowships, fellows, um, the idea is to fill a reservoir so that we can fund current projects right now being production of a show. Um, uh, other sort of projects that are building parts that we see that other people don't seem to be doing yet. And we've attracted a, a, a few people who like Giri Laios and uh, Marc-Antoine Parent and a few others who've got like a bunch of code they don't know how to get paid for. Nobody's really paying for them. If they, if they could be funded to, to complete that and put it in the commons, that would be us funding those particular gifts, but nobody else has them in their sites. And we can see how their value fits into the bigger puzzle. So let's fill those little pools and those are little pools. And then and the way I pitched it in the video that I shot was, and, and that's the first half million. If we get a million dollars, the second half million goes into a fund that does exactly what you just said, that has as its, it has as its investment thesis, the pieces that OGM wants to, needs, wants to see built. And we just go put money in some initiatives that we know are doing the work to help them complete that work faster. So I think that's not different at all from what you just said, but that was for me, the third bucket. And, and I don't, I'm not interested in running a fund where all I do is choose from between people appealing for funds and saying, well, you know, talking to donors and bring, like, that's not interesting to me, partly because I, I, I can, I see dead people. Like, I, I, I can see missing things out in the environment that need to be funded, that need to be stood up, that I don't see other people seeing. And the moment I find somebody who's got that thing and they're like, yes, I, I saw it too. And here it is. Awesome. Puzzle piece solved. We put it in place. Or the puzzle piece is 75% done. And if only it had this other thing, then it is open source. So let's fund the, the completion of that piece of work so that it fits with the puzzle. It, it, this is a little bit like Kintsugi, right? Kintsugi is the Japanese art of taking a broken pot and reassembling it. We're using gold and solder and making it more beautiful than it was before because the parts fit. And, and like, 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 like the broken pieces are actually beautiful. That's, that's another, yet another metaphor. But, but, I, but I think a piece of what OGM has on deck is a bunch of perspectives on what's missing that, that people aren't actually doing yet that may be tiny things, may, may just be a framing for, for how to do things. I don't know. And, and I'm really interested in funding those, building those and seeing how they fit together to complete the puzzle in some way. Always with, uh, if, we, you know, if we don't, if somebody else is way ahead of us on any of this stuff, let's just back them. But there's a bunch of pieces here where I haven't figured out who's there. And you just gave me the thought, um, uh, which I don't think is what we wanna do, but there's an interesting thought here about being the MacArthur Foundation for the next economy. Um, which is compelling because everybody knows the MacArthur Foundation and all they do is genius grants. And I frankly don't know what MacArthur geniuses have done. A and they have fueled a bunch of great thinkers individually, individually yeah. to do good stuff and, and be able to like, like really double down on their work. Phenomenal. They're, yeah. not we they're not weaving anything together. 
And I don't uh, know. I mean, yes, it, yes and no, because I would say that they're at the point, um, you know, where they're, they, um, uh, are, you know, just the virtue of giving, they're, they're like weaving, I mean, somebody who is obscure, you know, and, and obs obscurely toiling on this thing is instantly yeah. thrust, thrust into the midst of whatever network just that, by virtue of getting the grant. But yeah. Totally, that individual yeah. is, yes. And yeah. by being a grantee and going totally. to grant meetings, they meet other grantees. How else are they actually weaving anything bigger? Yeah. Any, mm -hmm. Anything bigger, seriously. Uh, so, so I think that there's a huge gap here where I'm thrilled that they're supporting individuals, but they're not weaving sure. anything bigger. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I would say a MacArthur, you know, for the next economy would like instinctually be like, here's, here, like if there were individuals identified, it, was, it would be like here, you know, um, Marc Antoine and Yuri and other people and Vincent, you know, whoever. Yeah. Here's this money that you only get <laughs> if you work together toward this thing. Kind of, perhaps. kind you know, of, um, yeah. If you can make a stew out of, uh, if you can make a stew that sort of fits these descriptions, there's a pool of money for you. Sure, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I in, mean, that, incentive, that be... incentive grants to finish parts of the, the, the puzzle. Right, so in a way, it's more like the X prize for the next economy. You know, it's, of. it's like, you know, let, let's, let's set some, let's set some goals and, um, and you know, that's the, the, the thing I was saying about the like six, $1 million things toward X, toward this thing, sorry, not X, because I just used <laughs> X is something else now. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, just like, this is something that is really crucial to us moving forward in the new knowledge economy, like, yeah, identify that. And I, I, I guess, you know, a, a little bit of what the tension for me and some of the stuff that you, you say and versus what I say is the difference between like, we wanna do all these things. And as soon as we find somebody who's doing those things better, we'll stop and support that person. I feel like there are so many people doing so many good things that we should be supporting the people who are doing doing things until and I don't expect that this will happen much, we find that there is really one thing that no one's working on at all that nobody has seen but us. And I think you think that we are onto something unique more than I do. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just more, you know, my sense, the more people I talk to, the more I realize that mm -hmm. there's not, there's no lack of solutions. It's more, you know, there's no, no, more, no lack of understand. I mean, I take that back. There's plenty of lack of understanding, but, but you know, somebody understands each, each thing better than, than you or I. Um, and like our generalists, I'm not trying to put the three of us in a special boat, but you know, um, you know the 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 generalists overview that smart people bring that a lot of the people in this in in OGM bring, um, you know, it is is a saving grace sometimes compared to somebody who's got blinders on and is coming up with a very specific solution for a very, like, you know, comes up with the formula for the perfect gold to like mend those broken pieces. Right. Um, but, you know, I do think that that, that generalism is, I don't mean to call it unspecial, but you know, I think that that, that the, the the bits of genius on particular issues, like I, you know, I mean, 
I look to support Kalia in solving, you know, sovereign identity before I think like, well, this, this whole thing that we're dealing with in collective intelligence demands sovereign intent, um, identity. sovereign identity, and like that's got to be a part of this bigger thing that we solve until we find somebody doing the whole thing better. Um, if that makes sense, I think so. And then, yeah. And Stacey, I was going to ask you what you thought. So good timing. Okay, so. Your quilt is actually something that I've been thinking about and trying to get people to see since 2019. And I called it a reality game show because the game part is what would bring people in to want to participate. And the problem, it was too big of an idea with too many moving pieces for me to explain it in a way, but I would like to have another to call with you because I have so many notes that related to the economy and related to this. So to Michael's point, what he was talking about, you know, with people working on sovereign identity, the creating of the game show would give an opportunity for those people to bring their ideas in. So that's why they'd want to participate in it. The, um, I mean, you have to focus me. I'd be better off if you asked me specific questions and I could tell you how this model would work. That would be easier than explaining it. So I, I didn't know that you had this model in your head and I'm thrilled about it and want to ask more questions about it. I also, I also was just interested in your visceral sensory reaction to this whole conversation. Like what, what, what's resonating, what we're energetically, what feels where, like just a, just a, well, obviously I'm thrilled because I, I kind of got to OGM. Really, I told you that for you. So I'm thrilled that I have somebody that sees what I had in my head. Um, and I understand Michael's skepticism because that goes to what you were saying before about it's a totally new way of looking at things and it's hard to get those new models in. And that's where I think of people like Michelle, bringing her in to kind of look at things, to make sure we're including different pieces. And I think in the beginning, you said something about, we'd actually be living in the commons. And a big part of this idea of creating a show, which I think the show itself could be something that eventually could pay off. And so it's sort of like that IOU model. Um, I mean, I have too much to say it right now, <laughs> it's just, um, but I think there's, so again, in this idea of a show, I see the projects wanting to be part of the show, right? but they're not working against each other. Cause let's say for argument's sake, you had three different projects that all focused on food. They're not competing against each other. They're highlighting, but there might be other people that want to push their software that they're working on and they want to win the money to further develop it. They would want to pitch those things to the projects and then the projects get to choose what they want. And I need help with, you know, because I don't yeah. understand some of it, but my idea, I just wanted to get people involved in creating it. And then we get the best minds to work on, you know, the people that are really interested in governance. Yeah. They focus on that part of the show and that brings in their creativity. So people aren't joining the show to make money. They're joining it because it's part of a community, but they might make money. And, you know, Michael, when you talk about like Factor wouldn't want to give themselves over to OGM. Well, but if there's a separate thing, the big quilt, you might want to play and be part of it and see how it works and see if there's something, but just you're coming anyway, just because you're friends. It's a social network. Thank yeah, you. Sure. You know, and, and I, I mean, the, the, the sort of giving self over, by the way, I mean, it was just like at, yeah. at the extreme. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, I'm here, keep being here, you know, donating Phil's time, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's enough. Um, 
not to be withholding. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just sort of almost thinking more for others who are who are finding out. But I, I think you're right, Stacey, that like, you know, there are certainly things, you know, being 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 tempted to just come in and and play the game, you know, be in the, the game show, be part of the quilt is is an attractive thing for all different kinds of people. Can you ask Phil if he taped our call? Because we had two calls and again I kept evolving the ideas, but it was pretty much about this, both calls. So I don't know if he taped them. I can ping him on Mattermost. What um, <clears throat> one other question of something you mentioned and, and I actually saw, I don't know if this is from if these things are the same thing, but you mentioned the, the concept of IOUs, and I saw that mentioned in the Hack MD from yesterday's meeting. I don't know if that's if, Stacey, were you at yesterday's meeting? Yes, I was. And so that was that. Tell me about the IOUs. <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy to do that if, unless you want to, Stacey. <clears throat> no, you can because I'm not sure. But what I will say is when I was envisioning this, I don't know how many of you know about. Um, something called seeds heard of it yes I have it in my brain okay so again in in my mind i was thinking they would be a perfect tie-in i never spoke to them about it i spoke to somebody else for his opinion of it that's on tape as well but um they're looking to create a new economy and i thought that using seeds as a way to track the ious would be another way to bring in you know everybody in their community so I don't know if that's what you mean by IOUs, that if you then get money, you know who's owed money for participating and working. Uh, pretty much. There's also a platform named CoMakery, and I don't really know how it works. <clears throat> but I think a piece of this is sort of choosing experimental platforms for to solve different parts of this, of this puzzle. Um, and the IOU thing is that there are people, you know, contributing a lot to OGM and to other projects whose work could be sort of paid forward or rewarded later rather rather than paid forward because uh, paid forward means something entirely different mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but um but for example and and there's people who could sort of justify uh contributing a lot more of their toil right now if they knew that it was being banked somehow and and partly and partly i feel like oh my gosh i, I you know i we we could easily run up a huge tab because lots of people are contributing lots of sorts of things here. Uh, what do we reward? What do we not? And then I can also on the on the positive side, I can see um, getting grant funding for stuff that is like mostly built because the people have been working on an IOU basis for a while. And then it's like, awesome, we got the funds. Here's the thing. Now we can clear that IOU and this piece of code goes into the commons or something like that. I don't. I, that's kind of how I'm envisioning it possibly working. Uh, but I, but I think I think one of the really big questions here is like how do we reward value creation in the network, and how do we reward value creation in a way that isn't also about surveillance and monitoring? So a long time ago, semi-famously among a few people, the Omidyar network created Omidyar.net. A bunch of people jumped in, and one of the key features of the Omidyar network was that you could give people everybody got a, a bank of points, and you could give other people points for good things they did in the network. But after your name, after your ID, wherever you were in the system was a, was a number in parentheses. And that number was like the number of points you had accrued. And that interface choice, that one interface choice made me never come back. I, I had no desire to be in a community where there was like my measure was after my name, wherever I went. And that meant that I was like asking people, you know, it implies, well, you should can you drop some months, some, some chits in my bin so my number gets bigger? Like that, that just broke the social nature of the collaboration. And also as a carrier of occasional outsider ideas, I'm not interested in competing for popularity of the ideas. I'm trying to find people who see that the ideas are important. And usually that's a little minority of, of the crowd, right? Um, and so, so how to do that? Anyway, um, I think that a, a monster issue that we're all facing, I mean, I think one of the issues is what is the right relationship for an entity like Factor in the future in this whole ecosystem? What is the, what is the best and highest purpose they can, they can play so that the people building the platform are happy, so that it's a profit-making entity, so that it's playing well in the commons, all of those kinds of things, right? Yeah, I mean, 
profit making entity, not a necessity. <laughs> I mean, well, it, profit. Know, Profit meaning that there's money above what it costs to actually run the platform. That's sure. All, all or, I mean. or, or funding, you know, in another model, despite the fact that there isn't. So, but yeah. I mean, I'm just, yeah, but yeah, functional, sustainable. Yeah, exactly. Functional, yeah. sustainable. And, and, and so that implies trying out a bunch of stuff too. So I think that's where, that's where we're heading. And, and there's, interesting ways to pragmatically try to run a lot of these things. One of the problems we're going to run into is that every platform out there sees the whole world and is building lots of the whole world, right? So the OFC platform that we had a bit of a demo of a couple of days ago, Pete and I were on the call with Caitlin and Judy um, and, and Caitlin did a really nice job sort of showing us what the platform they got. They're sort of building out a lot of stuff. Um, that overlaps a bunch with Trove, for example, and where Vincent is going. And I don't know how that plays out. I really don't know how that plays out. And so the flotilla calls that, that are happening on Fridays are an attempt to create a neutral space to talk through some of these issues. And I don't know how that, you know, again, I don't know how that plays out. But I, th but I think that experimenting is really important. Being loose about the experiments is important over time so that we can swing to a new vine when, when something shows up. Um, building models that let organizations that are intended to be for benefit or for profit like work in this world well is important and making it so that the increasing number of free, free agents can thrive in this world is really important because what I see from employment trends is fewer and fewer full-time employees, more and more people going off on their own, uh, some of whom are going to do just fine because they're in high paid professions and they've got a reputation many of whom are going to slip into the precariat because there's not a lot of money uh, in the gig economy and other kinds of, of, of sort of independent vehicles like that. So how do we make that better? Right? Yeah. Can I just add one thing? And then yes, please. I guess we're getting, I just want to say, that, you know, in with the idea of the show to not lose the idea that we're testing out a possible new economy to really keep that, that's something that is an interesting thing to do to see how it works. And to recognize that by doing a show, we're gonna increase diversity by being able to bring in creatives, which by nature are more diverse. So like each one of these little things, there could be background music, you know, or, or a new opening song. So what's different about this economy than the other economy is that we want to create work which is totally different than what we have now. Agreed, agreed. Um, we've got a long and wonderful time. Uh, any any Great. wrapping, any closing <laughs> thoughts for this conversation? The show must go on. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that. Um, cool. Bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you. And, and Stacey, I'm thrilled that, that like a lot of the vision that you were having was is resonating here that that's really oh i'm so thrilled <laughs> so keep your notes don't lose those notes from this call i'm gonna be pulling them out <laughs> I, I sent a question to phil to find out if you recorded so we'll figure that if out if they are if, if they are recorded though i don't mind sharing them individually i'd rather not be public yep i have a feeling i feel, have a feeling the answer will be no because I, I do i have the same feeling yeah Bill's not inclined to, I mean, he's, I don't I think might have involved. asked him to at the time. I um, sometimes maybe. ask yeah, people to do it and save it. Cool. Okay. Well, in that case, not enough. Yeah. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you all. Yeah. Glad yeah. we didn't shut down these calls. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs>